Council. Call a meeting to order. Welcome, everybody. And uh, as we acknowledge to that tonight, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yes. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Worship. First item this evening is the minutes of the regular council meeting held on Monday, January 11th. Recommendation to approve. Moved by Councillor Zarello, second by Councillor. Oh, there we go. Dennis. And Councillor Marsden. All in favor? Opposed? Aired unanimously. Item two is minutes of the Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting of December 9th, 2015. Our recommendation is to receive those minutes. Moved by Councillor Marsden, second by Councillor Zarello. All in favor? Opposed? Aired unanimously. Item of business arising out of that committee's meeting concerns their 2016 work plan development. The committee's recommendation is that the Economic Development Advisory Committee 2016 work plan be approved. Moved by Councillor Mars and second by Councillor Zarillo. Councillor Reed. Um, in the work plan, uh, I did discuss this with the chair, but you have um, an opportunity of renewing Riverview and presentation by BC Housing. And I would hope that council would get, get a chance to deal with all this before it goes to your committee. That that was the intent, I believe, wasn't it? Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. People at home can see your lips moving, but that's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's more than enough. Dr. Marston. Uh, yes, that's that, that's exactly correct. We'd want uh, council to. Uh, Get the get the information first and foremost, and then have the opportunity for BC Housing to present to the to the uh, EDAC committee and discuss any any specific details from there based on council's feedback. And the preliminary polling numbers are in. You're not they're not as thrilled as you thought. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. <laughs> Item three is the first item considered tonight's public hearing. It concerns City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 4634, which is at 1041 Quadling Avenue. Staff recommendations that Council give second and third readings to City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 4634. Moved by Councillor Asmus and second by Councillor Marsden. Councillor Wilson. Just wanted to uh, clarify um, uh, in our uh, information, extra information here, it was talking about. Um, uh, ICBC uh, registration for number of cars per dwelling unit and um, in there it said that in this area of Maillardville uh, it was uh, two cars per dwelling unit and that also included secondary suites. So I'm just trying to make sure I really have it clear in my head. Does that mean if a, if a house had a secondary suite that most likely there were four cars registered to that um, house. For your worship, uh, that is what our transportation um, group said with their analysis of the information, but they were rounding up numbers. So they did say that it was difficult to pinpoint on a block um, which units actually were contributing to that number based on the postal code. Um, but in general, they said um, anything over 1.5 cars, they rounded it up to two. So it would be two for the single family unit and two for the suite, roughly. And, and those were suites that we know of? That's correct, through your, your worship. Um, that is correct. Um, they had to make some assumptions, they said. Uh, and they did round up to add uh, commercial vehicles that they know are often registered um, to outside companies but brought home. So they did add a little bit of um, extra in those figures as well. So I, I'm just trying to understand the reality of the situation then. If, if there are a lot of houses with suites that we don't know of that have only two vehicles per house, then that number her dwelling unit could actually be a bit lower. Hence our requirement for only three parking spots for a house with suites. Is that rational? Your worship, Mr. Dollar. 
That is our assumption, but we are doing a detailed review as part of the parking study uh, that we're committed to bring forward. And we are targeting in this first quarter to bring that study forward with further details on this. Great, thank you. Thank you. Ambassador Zerillo. I wonder if we could just get the aerial back so we can have a screen. See from this photo that it's got really big lots and they've only just started repairing. But uh, one thing that we talked about was the fact that there will be sidewalks. There's going to be a sidewalk created, although a short one for right now. But you can also see a whole bunch of perpendicular parking, which I believe is uh, is not allowed. It's a bylaw infraction, and I think if we, I'm, I, I feel totally comfortable to uh, rezone this property. But I just want to make sure that we address those bylaw infractions as soon as possible, so that if if we're starting a pedestrian pattern here, that we change the behavior early. So that would just be my request. I see five houses with uh, perpendicular parking, which I believe is not allowed. Is that true? Ms. Dave For your worship. Uh, yes, that is true. Uh, bylaw enforcement staff are working with the Engineering and Public Works Department to coordinate a response plan to address perpendicular parking um, as it is. Uh, min, in many areas of southwest Coquitlam. And I guess I'll just mention in closing, I think we did get one letter. Someone was concerned about the tree. You can see it there in the photo. Um, but all the perm all the permits are in place if that tree ends up getting torn down. Yeah. Your Worship. In this case, there was an assessment done of the tree, um, and uh, it was determined it's in good condition, but uh, unfortunately it is so large, and it, at its location, uh, it would prohibit any development on the site. Um, through the tree cutting bylaw, um, owners are permitted to cut two trees per year, uh, and so the applicant will be um, removing the tree that's on the site. They have permission from the uh, neighbor um, as it straddles the property line. Thank you. And, and to, be, to be clear, no permit is required. Okay. Seeing no other speakers. Question is second and third reading. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Item four pertains to Safe Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4599. This is for 1107 Quadling Avenue. Staff recommendations that Council give second, third, and fourth and final readings to Safe Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4599. Moved by Councillor Martin, second by Councillor O'Neill. Councillor Zarello. So, um, just wanted to make a quick comment about the. Um, Parking. <laughs> Just concerns about the letdowns. I know I still have concerns, even though we're saying it's technically feasible. I still have concerns because I do believe that if it's not convenient, even if it's technically feasible, if it's not convenient, uh, it won't be used. And I just wanted to mention to staff, although I totally uh, will be moving forward with this one because this community is definitely open to unlocking the value of their properties, um, that I would rather see a double side letdown and uh, less street parking. I think that we uh, could certainly move towards encouraging less street parking. Uh, maybe it'll get people out of their cars. So um, I just wanted to mention that, that I, I, I really think parking, even though it's technically feasible, needs to be convenient and usable. Thanks. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Next item, item five, City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4600. This pertains to 1113 Quad Lane Avenue. Staff recommendations that Council give second, third, and fourth and final readings to City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4600. Moved by Councillor Asmussen, second by Councillor O'Neill. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. 
Item number six, the City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4601. This is for 3417 Victoria Drive. Staff recommendations that Council give second, third, and fourth and final readings to City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4601. Moved by Councillor Asmussen, second by Councillor Towner. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Item number seven is City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4638. This pertains to 3419 Victoria Drive. Staff recommendations that Council give second and third readings to City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4638. Moved by Councillor O'Neill, second by Councillor Marsden. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Item number eight is City of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4630. This pertains to 960 Stewart Avenue. Staff recommendations that Council give second, third, and fourth and final readings to see Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4630. Moved by Councillor Towner, second by Councillor Hodge. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Item number nine is C of Coquitlam Official Community Plan Amendment Bylaw number 4594 and C of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4595. Both bylaws pertain to 95 Schooner Street. Staff recommendations that Council give second, third, and fourth and final readings to C of Coquitlam Official Community Plan Amendment Bylaw number 4594 and second, third, and fourth and final readings to C of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4595. I know it was seconded by Councillor Towner, but I think it was moved by Councillor Asmussen <laughs> and several others. Um, list them all. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Mr. Burke, on item number number eight on the public hearing, number ten in the council agenda, there was a comment made during the public hearing related to due process and it was suggested that a, a rezoning, a prior rezoning of the KMS tool site, we'll call it by its uh, business name, was done without due process. I want to make, make it very clear it was done completely with due process. It was done according to the City of Coquitlam's uh, requirements for zoning bylaw changes and it was done under the auspices of the Local Government Act and Community Charter related to rezoning, rezoning uh, processes. The challenge that was identified was simply that one secondary effect of that rezoning was not considered and that is to be corrected if, uh, if this item number 10 on the council agenda goes through that will correct an inadvertent uh, item that wasn't caught. But all the processes on this, all of the notifications have been completely in accordance with every requirement uh, uh, the faces rezoning. So I did want to make that clear, Mr. Burke. Thank you, Your Worship. Appreciate that. Item 10 is C of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4633, which pertains to 943, 947, 949, 951, and 953 Sherwood Avenue. Staff recommendations that Council give second, third, and fourth and final readings to C of Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4633. Moved by Councillor Marsden, second by Councillor Asmussen. Councillor Wilson. Just uh, wanting to see if, uh, because of our zoning consolidation uh, and the changes that, that it made to these uh, properties, was the applicant required to pay any fee for this uh, application? Your Worship, uh, Michael, just confirmed, but I believe my uh, instruction was to uh, the city to initiate this because it was through our actions of doing the zone consolidation and um, as the Mayor Stewart pointed out, uh, the opening of this item, uh, all due process was followed, but uh, just inadvertently by making that change to the property to the south, it triggered this greater setback restriction on the north side. So um, I think we took this on as a priority as, um, I think it was a, a pro bono effort to uh, to get this cleaned up, but also it, it's it's it was a reminder to us. It was a, a good point taken that uh, when you make these changes uh, in the, the zoning, we have to look at those adjacencies. So it's on our to do list because um, other areas where changes were made, uh, where you're adjacent to commercial and residential, different setbacks kick in. So we'll have to look at that. 
Thank you, because I would I would hate to see, you know, uh, owners um, through no fault of their own having to go through this long, lengthy, expensive process. So uh, I'm glad. Thank you. And that is to say, they, there was no they wouldn't have needed consultants. It was essentially the city stick handling a process through the city. Understood. There's nods over there, so we'll take it. Councillor Zarillo. I find this one really difficult because I still have some uns outstanding uncertainty um, on all of the options that are available for this uh, lot. I know what that was mentioned that it would have to go through an OCP change, but I mean, I don't have, I, f I feel like I'd like to know what, what does that OCP amendment involve and, and I'd like to hear all of the options. So I, I think it's unfortunate what's happened, but I think that it's, probably our obligation to make sure that we've explored every option in the long term because I would hate for this to come back in a year from now or two years from now and and I am very familiar with this corner I, I did live just north of uh, Lougheed and came this way a lot of times over the first two years in Coquitlam and so I understand that these properties have actually been uh, viable for sale but I just don't feel that we have full understanding of all of the options that are available in the long term I, I, I'm, I'm torn on this one. Thanks. Thank you. I will add only um, I'm going to be supporting this. And uh, Mr. McIntyre uh, fell on his sword a little bit a few minutes ago. But the reality is that the change from nine industrial zones down to three, all of the related work for th literally hundreds, thousands of properties with their adjacencies uh, is a tremendous amount of work. And um, uh, I, I think it's, it's unfortunate that this happened, but I, I want to make certain that the public understands the amount of work that that, that the amount that that simplified our zonings across the city, but also the fact that so many details had to get uh, looked after. And I'm, I'm pleased that staff have stepped forward to fix this one um, with this proposal, and I will be supporting it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Under 11 pertains to final reading to bylaw number 4420 and the development permit authorization for a car wash facility at 801 Henderson Avenue. Staff recommendations that council give fourth and final reading to see Coquitlam zoning amendment bylaw number 4420 2013 and approve signing and sealing of development permit for 801 Henderson Avenue and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to execute it. Moved by Councillor Hodge, second by Councillor Towner. Councillor Reed. Information or my own information, probably. But um, I noticed that the applicant has been doing a lot of environmental work on this for uh, soil remediation. Is that because of the gas station? Or is it because he would, I mean, when he leaves here, will the car wash as well have to have a, another environmental certificate because it's a car wash? Through your worship, um, from the reports that have been submitted, uh, yes, it's the gas station is the originating site of the contaminants. Uh, as part of this process, they will be cleaning the site up entirely, and um, the gas station, I mean, the new car wash, the proposed car wash should not be uh, resulting in more contaminated soil. That's what I wanted to know. So the car wash is exempt, it's just the gas station then. Thank you very much. Mr. O'Neill. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to acknowledge um, all the work that the applicant has done on this. Uh, as I recall the first time this came before council, um, it was um, having the car wash at exiting um, south onto Henderson, and that created uh, a lot of concern in the community, and council suggested that it would support this if we could find a way for the car wash to loop back around and have the exit away from the uh, existing residential neighborhood down there. And uh, the plan clearly shows that the applicant's been successful in finding a way of doing that. And I want to acknowledge the good hard work then that the, the applicant must have done and changed the plan to, uh, to uh, reflect uh, council's desires to um, have a minimal impact on the neighborhood to the south. So thank you very much. Thank you. Question is fourth and final. All in, all in favor? Opposed? 
You had your hand up. No, no, okay. We're unanimous. Uh, the <laughs> motion passes unanimously with one really slow on the downturn. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't have put two former journalists together. <laughs> Item 12 concerns the results of the public consultation regarding liquor manufacturing and liquor sales in grocery stores and recommended zoning bylaw text amendment to permit liquor manufacturing. This is bylaw number 4640. Our recommendation is that Council give first reading to save Coquitlam zoning text amendment bylaw number 4640. Bylaw number 4640 be referred to public hearing, and that in addition to the statutory public hearing notification requirements, that notification be sent to those groups consulted with as part of the public consultation process, including current liquor license holders in Coquitlam, industry associations, Coquitlam detachment of the RCMP, and prospective liquor manufacturers that have been recently contacted by the city or have contacted the city. It didn't get a second. <laughs> Moved by Councillor O'Neill, second by Councillor Wilson. Councillor O'Neill. Just want, wanted a, um, some more information here. How long do we think that the um, consultation, for the, um, the notification, in addition to the statutory public hearing requirements, that notification will be sent to these extra groups? Are we going to give extra time for them to get ready for the public hearing as well, or is it still going to be? Uh, the same time frame for, and we expect to see this public hearing in three weeks or a month and a half or something. Mr. Clark. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, after are, are, are considering the question of the timing of the public hearing for this item, and one of the reasons is simply trying to determine how many items will be going forward to the regular public hearing scheduled on February 22nd. Um, we've heard indications of anywhere four to six, and we should have better clarity on that in, in the near future. If the number is six, we might schedule this to be a special public hearing to take place on February 15th. If the number is closer to four, we may schedule it for February 22nd as part of a normal public hearing night. To go to your more specific question, um, it is typical that we would um, send it out all together just because we feel everyone should be informed at the same time. Now, what that means is that letters go out, uh, well, for the public hearing, um, letters go out 14 days in advance, um, and the uh, statutory requirement is 10 days. So we typically um, hope that the letters arrive in advance of statutory notification requirements. And I think as members of council may be aware, those who have um, expressed the greatest interest in this have, have been following this process closely, have attended meetings and are in contact with staff. So we believe that the word is, is, is out there beyond that as well. One of the reasons I asked was because um, the report acknowledges that um, there are still some parts of the liquor policy in the province that are in a state of flux, and those things may be changing between now and when there's a public hearing, and therefore there might be a new input based on new things that come out of Victoria or something like that. So I just wanted to know the time frame so we can keep all that in mind. Uh, we hear there's going to be a major announcement out of Victoria in March or something, and well, it just something else to put into our little computers here to figure out. Absolutely, and I, I stand to be corrected by the General Manager of Plan Development, but um, regardless of any change that may be announced by Victoria in the next few weeks, um, the bylaw would stand as it is because it's this bylaw that has been referred to public hearing. Oh, I understand that, but, but people will have new information that they'll want to bring to the city. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Asmussen. I want to thank staff for putting together this report and the amount of consultation work that they did bringing this forward. Um, and I do think that staff has had difficulty with the ongoing changes in, uh, that we've had. Councilor Freed and myself on different occasions through the last couple of years have had certain difficulties in us trying to get an exact read on what's going on. I guess at some point I'd like to see the provincial government come to a finalization on what they're going to be doing with their complete liquor regulations because even through this report, through the addition on a change that was added in at the last moment about um, craft breweries being allowed to sell 20% of their non-brewed different items within there, which is another change that came out. And it's, it's difficult for us to keep dealing with this and amending and going forward. So I hope for the problems that they will look at a final document. Um, I always like to think that 
So it's going to be interesting to see what the, the public, we had a lot of consultation, a lot of public hearings, some more. I think we're opening up the ease of alcohol, but you're also dealing with the other side of alcohol, which is the addiction effect and the funds and the money. We're making about 900 million, maybe going to a billion dollars out of liquor taxes and how much goes towards the addiction side of it. So it's a big issue. I think that's another issue that has to be talked about within this. And um, I'll leave it at that for after the public hearing. But I just want to thank staff. I think there's been a lot of good work done, a lot of good consultation already. It'll be interesting to hear what the public says at the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. More other speakers? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Your Worship, that is the last formal item on this agenda. Moved by Councillor Asmundson, seconded by Councillor Reed to adjourn. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. I want to let everyone know that the best women curlers in the province will be showcased here in Coquitlam beginning tomorrow when Coquitlam Curling Club hosts the 2016 Scotties BC Women's Curling Championships right here in Coquitlam. The event will take place from January 19th to 24th and will feature eight elite women's curling teams vying for their chance to go to the nationals. You can watch it at Poirier Sport and Leisure Complex or on Sportnet. Patty Knezevic, defending champions from Prince George, will be there, as will the six-time BC Women's Champion Kelly Scott and her team from Kelowna, and uh, folks from around the province. So you want to check out the exciting curling, the thrilling curling, the skills curling uh, tomorrow at the beginning tomorrow, beginning tomorrow at Poirier Sport and Leisure Complex. Very good. I will now uh, open the floor to get questions on tonight's agenda. If there is any questions on any items of tonight's agenda, limit yourself to a question up to two minutes and a total of 15 minutes. If there's any questions on tonight's agenda, questions on tonight's agenda, questions? Nope. There's none. Thank you all for coming. Well, I have questions, but I just...